So the Swiss wall is notorious for being one of the most difficult black runs in the Alps. This run is so steep that you can't actually see most of it at the top. You just see the ground in front of your feet. And then you see the bottom of it, which is over a kilometer away. It's a phenomenal challenge, but at the same time, it's an incredible achievement. So if you'd like to be able to say that you skied one of the hardest black runs in the Alps, stick around for a few minutes and I'm going to give you 10 top tips on how to ski the Swiss Wolf. And if you watch until the end of the video, we're going to show you our attempt at skiing this infamous beast of a black run. I'm George, by the way, and this is my mate Mark. We're both level four ski instructors here in Avoria, and we've spent a few years steep skiing in this part of the Alps. We'd like to offer you some of the tips and insights that we have learned from our time skiing on the Swiss wall. The question is, can Mark still rip the moguls like he used to, or is his newfound fatherhood-induced fatigue going to slow him down? <laughs> The Swiss wall is definitely a tough one, but actually it might not be quite as difficult as it sounds and with some decent basics and a strong mindset, this is a very achievable goal. This epic ski run lies just a couple of chairlifts away from the Avoria ski resort in the centre of the Port de Soleil. Avoria is the highest out of more than 10 resorts which make up this enormous ski area which has a network of about 200 ski lifts, all connected by a single lift pass. This is my favourite place in the world to ski, so let's get into these top 10 tips. Before we do though, please pause the video and read this warning. Tip number one is to check your level. This is an exceptionally steep and mogul run, so before you ski the Swiss wall, make sure you're already confident on black slopes and that you've practiced in other moguls and variable snow conditions first. Aim to ski with control on difficult slopes by following the two golden rules of solid ski technique. Balancing on the outer ski whilst turning and keeping your body weight perpendicular to the skis. You can recap the two golden rules and more tips for steeper slopes and mogul skiing in these other tutorials. By the way, make sure you check your bindings before you drop into the Swiss wall. The forward pressure and the release setting needs to be set up to you and to your ski boot. So ask for help if you're not sure, but otherwise you might end up watching your skis ski the Swiss wall without you, or even worse, blowing a knee ligament. Tip number three is to choose the right day. The difficulty of the Swiss wall depends massively on the current conditions. Sometimes it can be relatively easy, but sometimes, particularly when the moguls are big and the snow is icy, it can be heinously difficult. So if it's your first attempt, aim to find a day when it is a bit softer and a bit more friendly. Either after recent snow or when it gets slushy is ideal. And by the way, it faces east, so expect it to be in the sunshine in the morning and in the shade in the afternoon. Tip number four is to warm up first. Get a few laps of skiing reds and warming up in before you get to the top of the Swiss wall. There's bumps and variable snow conditions under the Shuka and Forne chairlifts. So go for a ski around for an hour and do some skating around the entrance to warm up your legs before you drop in. So the top section is the hardest part. It's the steepest part. It's the most crowded part. And all the traffic which passes through here sculpts all sorts of weird and wonderful snow formation, so take it easy. And treat this bit with respect. Tip number six is to choose your line. There's three main routes that you can choose to ski the Swiss wall. Under the chair, the central route, and the ski is left. Don't go outside the marker posts on the right of the run as you are then above massive cliffs. Under the chairlift is normally the most difficult as it's the steepest and most bumpy. The central route is the medium difficulty and the ski is left is the widest and least mogly part of the run. I'd also advise against going any further left of the marker sticks since you then become exposed to a lot of avalanche terrain above you. So if you're coming from Switzerland, then you'll get a chance to recce the Swiss wall on the ride up the chairlift. If you're coming from Avoria, you'll be dropping into it before you've seen it. It's possible to ride the chairlift down as well as up, so you can use that option to either scope it first or to avoid it altogether. Okay, so technique for steeper terrain. Now, one of the most common mistakes that people make in steep slopes is they lean into the hill. Feels like you're closer to the ground and therefore somehow safer. But in order to have good control, we need to actually project our body down the hill. So it's easier said than done. So you can think about reaching your pole plant down the slope and that 
brings us forward, commits us into our next turn, and we end up having more control. So something a little bit like this. So I'm reaching my pole plant down the slope, committing into my next turn, and I'm trying to avoid the common mistake of leaning back and into the hill, because if I do this, I haven't got very good control. So I'm trying to reach the pole plant down, commit forward into my turns. Oh, the snow is really good. <laughs> Tip number eight is to keep your speed under control. Don't start your next turn until you've regained control from your previous turn. Starting the next turn too soon often leads to accumulating speed and gradually losing control. So complete your turns and control your speed before you start your next turn. By the way, falling leaf side slipping is your get out of jail free card on steep and scary slopes. So if you can side slip, then you can control your speed. And if you can side slip forwards and backwards, like a falling leaf, then you can side slip, control your speed, and get down all sorts of steep and scary, challenging bits pretty safely and with control. So practice your falling leaf side slipping, because that's your get out of jail card on steep and scary slopes. Tip number nine, tactics for skiing moguls. Skiing moguls is its very own art form and there are loads of fun ways to ski them. We cover the various tactics of skiing moguls in another video, but to give you a brief intro into one of them, you can think about using the moguls as speed bumps to help you control your speed. Skid your skis sideways into the bumps and they will help you to slow down. Then when you stand on top of the bump, it's a bit easier to pivot your skis, to turn them and to seesaw them down into the next trough and to skid the edges to control your speed. There's a lot of turning and a lot of skidding. The goal is to ski with finesse and control rather than athleticism and speeds. So look for the smoothest route through the madness. And by the way, make sure you take a pause at some point on the way down and enjoy the view. You are surrounded by epic Swiss mountains and mind blowing scenery. Take a deep breath of that crisp alpine fresh air and marvel at these outrageously beautiful landscapes. So I hope those tips help you to ski the Swiss wall safely and even enjoy it during the process. Now we promised you at the beginning of the video that we would show you our attempt at skiing it. So here goes nothing. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to improve your skiing and achieve goals like skiing the Swiss wall, you can get in touch with our team of instructors in Avoria, and there's also loads more tutorial videos to help you prepare for your time on snow. Now please be safe, be advised that there has been many fatalities and countless injuries on the Swiss wall over the years. Please look after yourselves, take it easy, have fun and enjoy the view.